people did seem to get up in arms when they found out who you were the love child of. A lot of people mm. seemed to get really um, frantic when they found out that Ethan was Luke and Holly's son. Yeah. Um, and people kind of turned on you, which yes. is a weird thing when people can't separate you know, art from life. Yeah, it happens all the time, especially with soaps. Uh, with soaps, you're in someone's house every single day. You know, mm-hmm. so you, you become their house guest. Right. And they feel like they know you on a personal level. Um, and when I when I when Ethan first came on the show, there was some debate as to whether or not I was supposed to be Luke's son or Luke is the first person you meet in that very episode. Yes, yeah. He and he did end up being my At father. the Haunted Casino? At the Haunted Star, yes, the floating casino. Um, so there was some debate whether I should be his son or Robert Scorpio's son, who's a this actor the actor's name is Tristan Rogers, and he was on the show before I came up. He was Australian, the secret agent. Um, and so they kind of were at a toss-up. Is he Luke's son? Is he Robert Scorpio's son? And ultimately, Tony and I, the actor who plays Luke Spencer, we got along so well right from the get-go. I mean, we're kindred spirits. You know, he's also a Gemini. <laughs> and, uh, so between him and I, there were always like 72 people in the room. And, uh, you know, we would just talk and get along and we had so much in common right off the bat that Tony actually went upstairs and said I want him to be my son he has to be my son we're just too similar we have too many similarities you know this has to be my son and they said well we don't know we kind of want to hook him up with Lulu Spencer and you know so there was all this debate and uh, they also didn't want to break up the whole mythos of Luke and Laura which as everyone knows, is this big deal that happened in the 80s, and it was mm-hmm. like the During ultimate the the romance. 80s, yeah, yeah. Um, People are still talking about exactly. it. Exactly, and there's still plaques like at the studio commemorating <laughs> Luke and Laura. Um, and so if I was Luke's son, it meant that he cheated on Laura, which ruins this whole like yeah. idyllic view of the thing. And I loved that. <laughs> Tony loved that, yeah. you know, because he kind of wanted to put a knife in it. Um, and his character is not one to be faithful, if you will. So it kind of fit in that regard. And yes, I was strongly disliked for a very long time. Um, until <laughs> until you sort of grew out of it or the storylines for you evolved into such a place yeah, where yeah, well, Ethan I think was liked again. I was just there enough. I was in people's houses enough that they were like, okay... I guess he's all right, you know. <laughs> and going back to that photogenic thing, you just smile and laugh enough, and eventually they'll love you. <laughs> As the end of 2011 happened, and the stories had to come full circle for you almost, mm-hmm. they created this woman in white mm-hmm. in Windermere Castle. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us, even those who don't listen or watch um, daytime TV or follow GH, Gen Ho, as I hear it called, um, do they call it that? I don't think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> can you explain that plot line to people and um, sort of the you know, grand nature of that whimsical storyline? Yeah. Um, that was a storyline actually written by Garen Wolf, who was the outline writer for us when Bob Guza was still the writer. Um, Bob got fired. Garen became the head writer. And but wrote... Bob created you. He did create me, yes. Um, it's a weird thing to say. It is. Yeah, Bob <laughs> created me. It is weird. Um, but Garen stepped up and became the head writer for a very for an all too brief time, and he had this great, like, very long year long storyline with this like secret gothic romance kind of very Wuthering Heights, very, uh, um, yeah, just unusual, I guess, in that regard. And so he brought in this woman in white. No one knows who she is. She doesn't. Is she a know ghost? Who she is. There's, it's unclear. That is the implication at first. Yeah. Okay. We don't we don't really know who she is. It's just it's always like beacon, this light in windows, and and um, anyway, it was supposed to go on for a very long time. So they didn't show her face for like two months. <laughs> she didn't say her first words for like three and a half. Um, and by that time, you know, the story had already started, and then Garen was told to step down. And then they started phasing out all of his storylines, which was this the whole arc was just suddenly gone and so come the turnaround around december they were like okay how do we a get rid of nathan and then <laughs> b like wrap this whole thing up with a bow and um so the story kind of had this very gradual arc and then just came crashing down um and it was a great brief storyline you know the actress who played the woman in white alicia is phenomenal um, and she was really fun to work with, and uh, 
sadly, it just wasn't meant to be. And she got killed, and then I left, and uh, that, that was the end of that. That's the most asked question. I, I sort of preface all of these fun questions asked in online forums, answered by Nathan Parsons, with <laughs> um, the one that's most searched, most um, pontificated on, and that's, why did Ethan leave the show? And that sub-question is, why did Nathan leave the show? Um, well, Ethan left the show because Luke told him to leave town. I mean, that... that I can't, it should have been better than that. I should have gone after the woman who killed uh, Alicia's character, the woman in white. You know, I should have gone on this whole vengeance killing spree. It, was, it would have been too cool. So <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Luke kind of talks me down from doing that, and then it's just like, but you should leave anyway, because I lied to Robert Scorpio and told him that you were his son, and all, it just got very convoluted. And so... I think Ethan just kind of was like, all right, peace, and then walked out of town. And um, But then Nathan left. I left because ultimately it wasn't what I wanted to do. I had been on the show for three years. I learned a lot. You know, I met some amazing people. I had good times. Um, but I didn't want to be on a soap for the rest of my life. You know, I want to do film. I want to do um, HBO stuff. I want to mm. do Showtime stuff, Stars, Netflix, you know, whatever. Um, and you've had success in other films and in other series. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say success. I mean, I've, I've worked <laughs> <laughs> outside sure. of the soap. And, uh, you know, my agents and managers have told me, you know, you got to get out. You got to do something. You, 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 I know you can do more, and I know I can do more. Um, you know, so I just wanted an opportunity to, to try that. For and, you, what's yeah. the difference when you're doing soap acting? How do you feel like it's impacted your acting chops? Have you feel like it's... Not made you regress, but it's a different medium altogether. It is a different medium. Um, I mean, the main adjustment is it's multicam. So you, and because of the time constraints, I mean, we shoot 250 episodes a year. We shoot five, six, seven episodes a week. Um, and in order to do that, you have to be constantly on point. You get one rehearsal, one take. You don't get to mess up. You know, you don't get to say, cut, I didn't cry enough. I didn't feel, you know, you don't get to do that. You're on all the time. And with the amount of pages that you have to memorize, that muscle is worked into overdrive. And now I can look at sides and do a cold reading off book, basically. You know, I look at it for half an hour to an hour. I know it by heart. Um, so it's just really helped in, in, return, in regards to just being prepared and being professional and always being uh, at your best, even if you're tired, even if you are you know, been there for 12 hours. Mm-hmm. You are always 100% on task. And that, that was something I had to learn over three years, you know. So thank the show for that. And there have been plenty of people that have been the show much longer. Oh, yeah. There are people who have made lifetimes and careers of soaps. And as you know, as everyone in the industry of soaps knows, it's um, there have been shows that haven't been as lucky as General Hospital mm-hmm. yeah. that uh, are falling by the wayside. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that and what do you make of um, it becoming a sort of on its last breath? Well, you know, I think with TiVo and with Netflix and with all these, you don't need to have a show on TV at 2 o'clock. Because at 2 o'clock, you can watch your favorite primetime shows. You can go watch Game of Thrones on a Tuesday, even though it airs on Sunday. You know, there's no time constraints anymore as to when things can be on the air. And soaps, because it all it's all character-driven, you know, so knowing can really die nothing can really happen because all the characters have to be there all the time year round um so it makes it difficult to create sort of this character driven drama that never ends there is no beginning middle and end there's no climax there's there's none of that you know so it show's been on since 1964 on the air at two o'clock for how many years is that now 45 46 years that's a long time to have a TV show. I think it's difficult with everything that's going on now to have a show that's on every single day, you know, with the smallest budget you can possibly imagine. You know, we, we don't have the budget to make big explosions and to do outdoor shots. We have to do everything inside on a soundstage. And it's just kind of this crushing pressure of, you know, a product. You have to constantly have this product. And you can't do that when you have a cast of 30 people and a crew of 100 people and do a show every single day. It's just not feasible. 
So it's sad because it has been, soaps have been such a staple, but there's not really room for them anymore, I think. And it, it's hard to see, but I guess that's evolution, right? So what's next for Nathan Parsons? What's in the evolution of his career? Book something, ideally soon, and start working. We'll start working again, man. You know, I when I first got off the show, my manager asked me, he was like, okay, so where are you going to go on vacation? You know, you finally ended this thing, you know, so where are you going to go? And I said, dude, I'm not going anywhere until I get a job. <laughs> you know, and it, that was, what, two months ago now, three months ago? And, uh... Yeah, now just still grinding it out and, and loving it. So hopefully a series, hopefully something. Do you have anything to say to your fans or your devotees? Because you do have a lot of people that look up to you and respect you. Um. Well, I mean, thank you. Mainly, you know, it, it was a, a good hell of a run. I think three years, that's a long time for me. And thank you for coming around on my side and, and being good to me for three years, you know. And keep watching because I'll be back. Excellent. We really appreciate that. And that is a teaser to end all teasers. And uh, we thank you, Nathan, for coming on the show. And we hope you'll be back on TP with TP. Absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Take care.